if you cannot fathom the idea that girls' bodies are messy and that girls have labia and that we have discharge and there are smells and that these things are natural and that's why we as humans shower. If the thoughts of sex make you giggle or if, if you can't fit the idea into your head that maybe you don't know how to make every girl in the world orgasm then you know maybe this video isn't for you. This video is more for the girls and or even like for the guys that truly want to know more. This is the video for you. So, let's get right into it. By the title of this video, you know that we're going to be talking about the female reproductive system, losing your V card. I'm gonna talk about how it was for me um, because I personally didn't have a big sister to ever talk to about this. All my life I grew up with like a bunch of guys who are five years older than me, they're my cousins and that's all I had. My mother, you know, we're very Mexican and they don't like to talk about those things to you when you're a little girl because they think that you're going to be a little girl forever. So they're like, I don't want to talk to her about this subject and have her thinking about doing these things. Little did they know that by me not knowing anything about it, I would have to go and find out about it myself through trial and error. And let me tell you that I went through some shit. Okay, so if anyone clicked on this video, you obviously want to know about what is sex like? Maybe, maybe y'all want to know what my first sexual experience was like. And let me just say, I really wish I would have known more about sex and from a woman's standpoint, not from the teacher that was teaching me how to put on a condom, you know, because I, I don't I don't remember learning anything in my sex ed class when I was in like what was it, eighth grade. I all I remember was they taught me how to put on a condom and they said practice abstinence. But really? Who is gonna practice abstinence when like all the kids start talking about sex and like the notebook and that sex scene and like it looks so magical and you know it's everywhere it's in it's in it's in theaters it's in movies it's it's impossible okay no it's not impossible to practice abstinence but it's very unlikely okay there's very few people in the world that really do practice abstinence and uh yeah you know so I guess the first thing that I want to talk about is there's no wrong way for someone to have sex. As long as you feel comfortable and you know, you kind of like feel good about sharing your first sexual experience with this person, you feel like you're in control of the situation and you, you're kind of dictating what's going to happen and what's not, what hurts and what doesn't. If you're comfortable enough to assert yourself and like say when you're comfortable and when you're not, then I feel like, okay, maybe you are ready to lose your V-card. But really, I feel like girls that are and aren't ready lose their V-card all the time because of misinformation. A lot of us are not properly informed about things and you have like, like stigmas for, um, tied to you about what sex should and shouldn't be and like sometimes you get overwhelmed by the idea of like oh my god I'm supposed to give my body and my virginity my purity to this guy who is this guy why how, how is it possible for me to know that just because I'm gonna give myself to this guy that things are just gonna work out perfectly I think I think that's why I could never buy into the idea that I'm supposed to give myself to one person and one person only. And I could never wrap my head around that idea that I'm going to have sex with one person and, and it would be considered a good thing for that to be it for me. No way! No way! In my head, look, this is what I think. I think that 
people end up cheating sometimes, not just because they're unhappy, but because they don't know what is out there in the world and they're unsure that this one person is everything that they're gonna have for the rest of their lives. And yo, even though I understand that there's so many different kinds of relationships in the world, there's people that will have sex once they're in love, once they're married, there's people that, you know, have one night stands and some of those people are unhappy. Not because of the one night stands, but for deeper reasons that maybe they have a problem with self-love and that's why they're having one night stands and they're going out and they're looking for quick love. But there's also people in the world who have one night stands and it doesn't hurt them because they feel whole and they feel complete and so they can go and have that one night stand and they know that they're doing it because they want the sex and they you know feel comfortable with this person enough to have sex maybe you know you just don't know there's so many kinds of sex in the world and it's all good because you know what the only kind of sex that you need to worry about is the one that you're having okay and maybe maybe the one that your kids are having if you're a parent maybe you should worry about that and like you know assert um yourself and you know inform your children about what sex is how it should go to be safe you know so yeah, there's so many kinds of sex in the world to be having and as long as you're comfortable and you're happy and you feel safe enough to tell the person that you're going to have relations with, you feel comfortable enough to tell them, hey, I like this or like, hey, I don't like this. Hey, this hurts. Hey, that feels good. That's when I think you should be having sex, in my opinion. This is just what I think. You will not have perfect sex the first time. Your first time, you know, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all know. There's a lot of movies out there that make it look like your first time is magical. And you know, it's very, it could be either very magical, it could be traumatic, it can be a lot of things. But what, what it will be, okay, um, is painful. And there's some people that say like, oh, it wasn't that painful for me, I didn't feel anything. I don't know if I can believe that because when you're a virgin, you've never had anything up in, in, in your coochie, that period. You haven't had anything up there other than what, maybe a tampon that maybe you couldn't even get up in there because you're so tight. I don't know about all that. It hurts because, you know, you're getting bent some other kind of way that you've never been before. So, honey, it is not that cute, okay? And so I think that the reason a lot of people say, like, wait till you're in love, wait for the right guy, is because that moment when you are being penetrated for the very first time ever, it just feels like... Happening. Have you ever tried to do the splits and you know, you feel your muscles and it doesn't feel like a normal kind of stretch. It's like, oh my God, this could potentially be dangerous. This doesn't feel, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not having the best time of my life right now, but, but this is what people do to make love. So like, what's going on? <laughs> like, it's weird. It's really strange. So when you have, when you're doing it with somebody that for your first time that cares about you, maybe you guys are not in love, but you care about each other. You will feel comforted knowing that they're there for you and that you both want to do this together and you want to go through it as one. I think that's why they say that like they recommend you to do it with someone that you love, etc. But um, yeah, the thing about having sex for the first time is you, you can't have regrets. There's no point in regretting something because you're not going to change what happened. All you can do is take what happened in that situation, learn something from it, and apply those lessons to the future. So the way that I looked at virginity, keep in mind, I was not the kind of girl that ever wanted to allow a man to have power over me, you know, because I grew up in a very, like, male-dominated household, meaning, like, my dad had all, like, the, he was alpha, 
you know, and I saw my mom being just so submissive all my life, and so my whole life I wanted the opposite of that, and I never wanted to be dominated by a guy. And from like movies and from hearing my friends' experiences about losing their virginity and all that and hearing my, my cousins' experiences about how they would get girls in bed and they would like bang their brains out and I was like just always so shocked by the way that the interaction sounded. It always sounded like the guy was dominating a girl and I never wanted to be like that. So in my head at a really young age, I think I was like 15 and I knew I was like, I don't want to fall in love and and lose my virginity to that person because then I could only imagine the kind of heartbreak that I would put myself through if the guy that I fell in love with also held like my my virginity. So when I was 16, uh, every year me and my family would go to my dad's hometown. And um, this one year, you know, it's a very, very small town. Sometimes people from um, NorCal come up to this specific part of Mexico. And you know, in this town, it's kind of like a cute town because it's so dusty. Literally the roads are all made of dirt. Uh, that Most of the houses are like made of like clay and you know, bricks. It's, it's not very um, modern, okay? So it's cute. You can see the stars at night, it's like pretty romantic. In my dad's hometown, we all go there. All, me and like my 40 something cousins, I got a big family. All my uncles, we go to town um, at a specific part of the year. This year, some kids up from NorCal came up too that we didn't know. And when I saw them, you know, at around 7 p.m., everyone in town during this time goes out to the festival that the town has. And, you know, we all like get real crunk. And there's this guy, you know, and he had like this curly, like long hair, and he had these green eyes and he was dressed like a skater and I was like, oh my god, uh, because I was 16 and, you know, he was just like, I looked at him and he just seemed so quiet and respectful and he wasn't like the other guys who were like just super loud and full of themselves and, you know, he just seemed like to himself and I liked it. We walked away from everyone, we went like a walk around town, through like the town park, and like the stars were shining, and, and, and they were so clear. I don't even remember what we were talking about, you know, but we ended up at his aunt's house, and you know, everyone was out and about, and uh, we were alone. And in my head, I was like, you know what? I'm in Mexico. I'm with this guy that I will never, ever have to see again if this interaction just goes terribly. That was what I, what I was thinking in my head. And he was so nice and he was so sweet. So we ended up in his room and you know, clothes were coming off and we we're like having a great time and then it's, 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 it's time. And at this point, you know, I was 16 and I, I'm kind of skinny now, okay? But when I was 16, I was way skinnier, so like, I refused to take off my bra, but he didn't say anything. I just didn't take off my bra because, you know, I was just so flat. I was like a table, which is fine, you know, but that's just how I felt at the moment. I was super insecure. So like, maybe I shouldn't have been having sex at that time. I don't know, but you know what, no regrets. I was on top of him and I thought, you know, this is this is it, this is the time to do it. Um, and I got on top of him and, you know, I, I, I tried, you know, to assert myself and be in control of the situation. I jumped off so fast. I was literally on top for like a quarter of a second because the pain was out of this world. I felt like I had just stuck a knife in myself. I, I felt like I sat on a knife, okay? It was terrifying and I, my body got so hot, like literally I like got on and then I jumped right off because it was so scary. This is a perfect example of what it means to not be ready. To, you know, 
do the damn thing. I, I wasn't ready. I'm so happy that my first time that I attempted to do this was with this guy because after, you know, I don't know what any other guy would have done, but he held me and he like just cuddled me the rest of the night because I was just so freaked out and I think he could tell. And so he just like held me the rest of the night and it was the sweetest thing even though I couldn't even sleep because I was just so horrified that that was how my first time went. I think I find comfort in the fact that he comforted me and he was so sweet and he didn't make me feel weird. He didn't, you know, he wasn't trying to do anything other than what I wanted. So yeah. Wow, I've never, I haven't talked about this. I was not in love, I was just looking at it as like, this is a great place and time and person to dispense my virginity onto. And you know, it was, uh, it could have gone worse, you know. I could have ended up trying to give my virginity away to someone who was just really trying to get it in and they would have had their way probably. But that wasn't the case. So although I didn't have like a perfect first time, I think that I had, a good learning experience, I think, right? What was your first time like? If you have had intercourse or like you've done the damn thing, comment it down below and I'd love to know because I love when girls talk about this because a lot of moms do not want to talk about this with their kids and you know, you need to talk to your kids otherwise they're gonna have to go and experiment and like find things out for themselves and you know, schools over here in the US they don't give kids a good enough sex education to know what to do and how to be safe they just say practice abstinence, use your condoms and that's kind of all you really get. I don't know if things have updated since then. I got my first sex ed class when I was like in eighth grade. What was I then? 13? 12? I don't know. I know in the UK, I think that I think their main motto is practice safe sex. And I like that so much better than like trying to tell kids don't have sex. It kind of reminds me of how like in Mean Girls, the coach is like, if you have sex, you will die. That's kind of how I feel the motto of like, sex ed is here in the US. And I think it's absolutely terrible. I think that that needs to be scratched out. Now, there's people that will look at sex and think, maybe this is something so special and that it's a spiritual thing, you need to save it for that one person, that's cool. Then there's other kinds of people that are like, sex is no big deal. We are mammals and we were created and put onto this earth with reproductive systems to utilize those reproductive systems and while that is true, you know, it's just a matter of accepting that these two kinds of ideas exist and they're both fun. I personally have gone through so many phases in my relationship with sex. So obviously I was like the kind of girl that was like, oh my god, oh my god, please someone take my virginity and I threw it at someone, you know? <laughs> I threw it at someone I didn't want it. I was like, please don't let a man that I love hold this kind of power. Take it. Take it right now that it doesn't mean anything. It's pretty crazy that I thought that way at such a young age. Oh my god. Wow, I've been so afraid of emotions at such a young age. Crazy. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, we have reproductive systems. We have them for a reason. We are mammals, just like monkeys have sex, we will have sex. It's just that, you know, humans, we love to complicate things with emotions and expectations and fears and insecurities and we got all that going on. And so, you know, some people choose to make the act of sex something very special and they don't do it with a lot of people. That's fine. I get it. But so I went through the phase of like, please take my virginity. And then I got to the point of where I was like, okay, I had a boyfriend for like a year. And with him, I remember that I was like, wow, this is what sex is. That I will never forget that what we had in the bed was like out of this world. And I remember I was so devastatingly in love with this guy and he just was like a god in bed and it was just crazy and so he 
He was the first guy that I really was like, we were going at it like monkeys. We were in uh, high school. And <laughs> that shit was so bad. Good sex does not happen from the jump. For some people, I think it does. To other people, it's not like that because you really have to learn each other's bodies, what makes them tick, what they like, what they don't like. Something that works for somebody will not work for another because you know, our bodies differ from person to person. The wisest man once said that he knew nothing. And I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna apply it to the world of sex, okay? If you're a man and you like to say that you're just so good in bed and that you can make any girl orgasm, I'm gonna have to doubt you. You know, because again, the wisest man once said that he knew nothing. So, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't think you really can know everything about every girl. So, what I'm trying to say is, I've had some experiences in the past where, like, foreplay has not been had. And, you know, my first relationship that was, that six month relationship with that guy I was like devastatingly in love with, it was so good because there was so much foreplay. So, especially if it's your first time, you need to have a lot of foreplay in order to get your body warmed up and let it know what's about to happen and get in the mood mentally and physically because that's gonna contribute to your entire sexual experience, whether that's your first time or just like another time that you wanna have like a good time. Um, you need to do foreplay, especially for girls. Guys, you know, I think that, so I think the statistic for guys is that 80% of men orgasm during sex, while for women, 62% of women orgasm during sex. And that is because through penetration, a lot of guys can orgasm. But for women, it's different because of how, you know, their reproductive system is set up. This is why foreplay is so important for girls. Guys, you need to go down there. There's a clip. I don't know if you knew this, but there, there's a clit and it needs to be, you know, worked. So foreplay is so important. I can't tell you, you know, there's been times when like I had sex and there was no foreplay and you know, I... it's horrible. It's honestly horrible. It really is. You have to work your way up into it to make that entire, you know, interaction enjoyable and amazing and, you know, to make it seem like it's more than sex because sex should, I think, feel like it's more than just physical. That's when, like, you have amazing sex, when it's, like, mental, you're mentally stimulated and you're physically stimulated. And deep down you guys care about each other and you want, you want each other to have that amazing experience together. You know, that's when sex is just like what can i say it's really freaking important if y'all go just get straight to the to the deed i know boys don't know what it's like you know, guys just get like really horny out of nowhere you know maybe you accidentally like rub their leg or like you were grabbing something and you accidentally touched like their and and boom you know like they're they're ready but for girls it's not like that. I'm not saying that, you know, out of the blue, a girl can't get very, very stimulated, but she wouldn't know like that. Girls need the foreplay. You need it. If, guys, if you incorporate foreplay every single time, you, you know, you're gonna make her fall in love. You wanna make a girl fall in love? Foreplay. Looking at porn when I was like 12, and then comparing it to like my first ever sexual interaction, I was like, like is this, are these the sounds we're supposed to make as girls? Are you supposed to like moan the entire time? Or like, I was just wondering like, why was she moaning? Like I was, it made me so excited 
for sex, actually, now that I think about it. But porn is just so unrealistic and it's such a lie. All those girls, first of all, have like boob jobs and they've had work done, you know, they get everything done. So when I was younger and I was looking at porn and stuff, it just made me feel so insecure. And I haven't even talked about it, but labia. So this is the girl's hoo-ha. Okay, coochie. We got coochie here. These girls in these porn videos, a lot of them have had surgeries done on their labia, which is the outer part of the vagina, the female reproductive system. It's the outer part of your coochie, and they hardly had any. And for me, you know, this blew my mind because I was like, why do I a virgin at the time when I was watching porn. I was like, how come mine doesn't look I'm getting really graphic here. I would look at these girls in porn and I would just feel like, oh my god, I don't look like that. Why don't I look like that? You know, and I'm tanner, you know, I'm on the tanner side. You know, like my nipples ain't pink. Okay. It was it was weird to see so much porn and like not see myself look like any of those girls like my breasts were not that big my ass was not that crazy i was just a skinny little thing and i was like oh my god i have so much to live up to <laughs> i wish i could have told myself it's okay like you know i've seen a lot of my friends vaginas now and i'm so grateful because i've been able to look at their vaginas and be like okay like i don't look that crazy i'm good i'm all right I think porn is just so bad for little girls to look at because it's not real. A lot of girls don't look like that. They moan because they're they're working. These these porn stars they're they're doing their job, okay? And that's I think the majority of their job is to fulfill these fantasies that guys wish were real. These guys in these videos are not doing anything crazy to make these girls moan throughout the entire video. I don't know. And I think in the beginning, when I was first ever having sex, I think I would sometimes fake orgasms. Girls do that, you guys. And we shouldn't. That's another thing. I don't think we should be doing that. So I think the general gist of this video, I just really want you guys to know that the way Hollywood has painted losing your virginity to be and what sex is really like and, you know, all these media sources that like are constantly throwing these things in our faces, like porn, it's not real, sex is not like that. At the end of the day, sex needs to be something where both parties, both male and female, girl, girl, whatever it is that's going on, whoever these two beings are, they want each other to have a good time, you know, and respected and you want to make sure they feel good, whether that's you, whether they're in a relationship or not, it's a one night stand, whatever it is, it's important that you communicate, that you talk, that you establish your boundaries, and that you make sure you guys are safe, protected, on birth control, whatever you need to be. I feel like that is how you're going to have the best sex and you need to provide a mentally stimulating situation as well as a physically stimulating situation to each other. Yeah. I think those are like all the tips that I've accumulated throughout the years. Um, and it's been interesting. You know, sex is, sex is weird because people are not the best at communication and it's hard to talk about like feelings and your insecurities and all that, but you kind of got to do that to have a better relationship. Whether that's with your boo, or your friends with benefits, or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments. I will get back to you guys. And uh, I hope this helps somebody. Any any girls that have questions about like sex, etc. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I love you guys and I will see you very, very soon. If you have any suggestions, please drop them down below in the comments. If you enjoyed that video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys very, very soon. Toodles.